Praise the Lord, and I want to welcome you all to our Wednesday Fellowship. My name is Moses. I believe that the Lord has been together with each one of us and has been protecting us even through this difficult period. I know that amidst all this, we can find a reason to thank the Lord and to be grateful and to count our blessings and name them one by one. I bless the name of the Lord because of you. And uh, before we share in uh, what the Lord has prepared for us today, I want us to pray. So let's believe God and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we worship you and we honor your name. We exalt you, we magnify you, and we give you all the praise. We thank you, Lord, for this session. We believe that, God, you are going to speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, uh, we are coming to you from uh, Kenya Assemblies of God. For those who are non-Assemblies of God members, this is Umoja KAG, where we love God, we love God's people, and we do the work of redemption. I want to speak to us about building our family altar. Of late, we have got communications, even from our authorities and the government, that our children should not attend church and even those people who are old should not attend church. And this is for their own safety and for their good. And all authorities are in place because they are bestowed by God. So ours is to follow what the guidelines of the government are, because this will help us even in our worship. So today, um, as we stay with our children at home, sometimes I ask myself, what are we, are we doing with uh, our children? And uh, this has been in my heart. I've been wondering, for this period of time when our children are at home, I've heard a lot of cries, people saying that uh, we are not with the, the, our children are not with the teachers, our children are not going to church with the Sunday school teachers, to, stay with, to be with the Sunday school teachers. But I ask myself, who does the responsibility uh, lie with? Because when our children are in our homes, it's our duty that it's God-given that we bring them in the way of the Lord. And one way we will be able to do this is by building an altar at home for, for our families. I want to speak to men. I've spoken to men uh, about this in uh, some fellowship that we had online. But I want to speak to all of us today who are watching that building a family altar is the most important thing you can ever do in life because this is the only way we'll be able to bring our children in a way that uh, God, in a way that pleases God. I want us to go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7 and I will read. The Bible says, Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at your home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. King James Version says, let me start from verse 6, and these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk on the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. I want to uh, bring to you that this is an instruction that Moses was giving to the children of Israel. Remember, after crossing of, uh, of the Red Sea, many of these people may not have lived long enough to have seen how, what God did to, their, to, the, to, the, to the Israel and to their forefathers. They may not have lived long enough, but the only way to pass the works of God to the generation and the generation and the generation to come was to go by Deuteronomy 6, 7 that say, teach them when you are walking, when you lie down, when you wake up. And you look at this verse keenly. When I was looking at it, I realized that it covers the whole day. There is when we are sitting down in our houses, there is when we are walking along the way with our children. We are supposed to teach them when we are lying down. We are supposed to teach them when we are waking up. The Israelites, were it not because of this pattern that they took, they couldn't have 
uh, remembered the doings of the Lord. I remember when they were crossing uh, the river Jordan, God commanded that they pick the stones from the middle of the river so that when they cross to the other side of Jordan, when the children will ask, because they will be inquisitive, what are these for? Then you get an opportunity to speak of it and say that these stones, we picked them when the Lord parted the sea, parted river Jordan for us to pass. Because those days, I know there were no scuba diving, you know. There are no, those people who could dive and go under the water were not there. So for you to have picked the stones from inside the middle of a, of a river like Jordan, then there must have been a way that was made. And that was a miracle that was supposed to be communicated down to our children and passed it, passed down to our children. So one thing that we can do one thing that you can do as a family is to build an altar, a place of worship, a position, a place where God can be glorified. You know, sometimes I ask myself, how about if I didn't sit down with my children to tell them about God? Where could they have learned this from? How about if I could not have taught them when we are walking along the way, we see things happening and I get opportunity to describe that this has the hand of God in it. When they lie down before they go to bed, we speak about it. When they wake up, praise the name of Jesus. Exodus chapter 13 and verse 14 talks of memorizing and teaching them to understand. Praise the Lord. You can have your own ways of letting these children or uh, the, the people you have in your house to understand and memorize the word of God. Because when we put the word of God in our heart, the Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and the light to my path. Where I go will be total darkness if it's not for the word of God. So teaching the word of God to our children brings light to their ways, brings light to their mind, brings a good thinking and decision making to them, lightens their path. When they are playing with other children out there, the word lightens their path. Praise the Lord. So I want to ask myself, therefore, what are some of the objectives of a family altar. I started by saying that laying an altar, a time of worship, just like when, uh, when, um, when, when uh, Abraham, before he left uh, Haran, after he left Haran, where he went, the first thing he did in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 7, he built an altar as the first initial thing for the worship of God. He'd been worshiping a moon and doing other worship, but now he has gone to worship God who called him. And the very first thing he did was to erect an altar, a place where he can worship God. In my family today, every evening, we sit down and talk about some few scriptures, talk about what the Lord has done, and I would encourage us. I know sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you get tired. We are home when we are tired. But the time of, war, of altar is a time that should be set aside and a time that should be respected. As a family, when you bring in your children together and the entire family to pray and speak of the things that the Lord has done, you will be encouraging, encouraging them to grow in the knowledge of the Lord. One of the objectives of a family altar, therefore, is worshiping God as a family. Without a family altar, it will be hard, it will be an uphill task for us to worship God as a family. But when you have a time for worship, when I mean an altar, I don't mean that you set a corner, put some funny, you know, vitamba and a Bible there, you know. I don't mean that. What I mean is a time to come together. They know that if it is uh, eight at night, this is our family altar time. We will sit down. We will have a word. We will sing some hymn together. We will praise the Lord together. This is what I mean, that family altar, one objective of it is to bring or to worship God as a family. Second objective, number two, is to root the family in faith in God's word. Amen. Proverbs 20, uh, chapter 6, verse 23 uh, says, let, let's read it together. 
Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23 says that for this command are a lamp, this teaching is a light, and the correction of discipline are the way to life. Keeping you from the immoral, I mean, just verse 23. Let's read verse 23 only. For this command are a lamp, this teaching is a light, and the correction of uh, discipline are the way to life. Amen. So once somebody has been corrected, their life becomes lightened up. Their ways, their path becomes lightened up. A family altar gives the whole family an opportunity to be rooted in God's word, to be deep-rooted, to be planted in a way that cannot be distorted. The Bible says, teach a child the way they should go, and when they grow up, they will never depart from it. When you are brought up in a Sunday school, personally, I was brought up in a family that fears God. Even though they didn't uh, really that uh, understand the kind of uh, fellowship or the kind of God they were worshipping by those days. You know, in traditional uh, times, when people are worshipping God, they think of so many ways a God can be. Others say, uh, when we want to pray, we have to face the direction and that. But there was a fear of God within them. I was taken to Sunday school, and what was implanted inside me several years later, right now, as old as I am, it is still with me. And I believe and trust that what we teach to our children will not be taken away from them. Other things, material things will be taken away from them. Children can, dis can, can go astray, and uh, so many things, wealth that you've kept for them, they can squander and spoil it. But one thing that you've kept in the heart of these children, the word of God, will not be taken away from them. So an objective as a parent, as, an, as a father in that family, as a mother in that family, is to root the family in God's word. Amen. The third objective is to offer prayers at the family altar. Prayers of unison, prayers of oneness, prayers of, uh, of, of uh, togetherness, prayers of agreement offered at family altar will avail much. Because at this time, each one of us will come together, bring their needs. Maybe a child has this particular need, this one has this particular And it helps even the children to open up because we are together, we are speaking of the word of God. Everyone speaks of their experience of what they've gone through through the day. And then a prayer is offered by our priest in the house. By this time, they, by, by the word priest, I mean the father in the house or the mother in the house, the one who is taking charge on that day offers a prayer at the family altar. So one objective is to offer a prayer at the family altar. Bless the name of the Lord. Now, I want to ask us, how then do we set up a family altar? Because this would be a challenging question. At this time when we are spending all the time in the house, one method of setting up a family altar is simply to set aside a time. You have that one hour of worship, one hour of singing, not a mass that you, you are singing has to be within key, you know, all those kinds of things that music entails, but simple worship, but heartly worship to our Father. You set aside the time and you say, eight o'clock, TV's off, everything off, tablets and all those, our phones off, it's time for our family altar. That's one method you can use to set aside a time for family altar. Method number two is simply to give, uh, to give duties. You have a timetable, you say today is so and so who will be leading this, so and so will be leading this, so that when we come to our family altar it is orderly and it is in, done in an orderly manner. I pray that God will help us to put this inside our heart, that by the end of the day, by the end of the day, we will have a time to sit down with our children. Even by the end of this fellowship, we'll have time to sit down with our children and agree and say, this is a time when we are setting aside for a family altar. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So just to recap on what I've said, 
One, that building our family altar, number one is to help us to pass down the things that the Lord has been teaching us as old people to younger generation and help it propagated over and over again. Number two, helps our children as an objective to be rooted in God's word. Objective number one, we said, worshiping God as a family, an objective for our family altar. Objective number two is to root the family in God's word. And objective number three is to offer prayers at the altar. I believe that we are blessed and that we are going to put this into practice and try as much as we can to set aside a time for God in our homes and together with our children. On Sundays, I know our children are still not allowed in church because of uh, their age and they are vulnerable. Therefore, as they stay at home, as they remain at home, they become rooted and uh, we are able to bring them together and teach them. Let's not just depend on what we watch online only, what we watch on TVs, and, and so on and so forth. Let's have a time for our children and bring them together and uh, teach them the word of God and pass this down to the generations and generations to come. If this generation will survive, will depend with how strong our family altars are. If this generation will live to see what God has for us and the plans that God has for them will depend with how firmly rooted they are in the word of God and how our family altars will be erected. But even having said this, family altar requires a huge spiritual discipline. It's not an easy thing. It's not uh, an easy-do thing. It requires spiritual discipline. The Bible says in uh, Psalms 127 and verse 1, not unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it, they labor in vain. So this is something that has to be done prayerfully. This is something that has to be done with a lot of discipline. This is something that has to be done with a lot of prayers. For it to succeed, there has to be discipline. There has to be uh, prayer involved. There has to be a lot of inputs in, uh, in, uh, in spiritual as much as spiritual discipline is concerned. If you do it with your own strength, try to hold a stick here and there and force a uh, family altar, it will not happen. It's the Lord who builds the house. It's the Lord who builds the home. Those who labor, they labor in vain unless the Lord builds it. So I want to finish by saying, by encouraging us to give this a try. For those who have not done it, it is very good and it is going to help us grow a God-fearing family and hence a God-fearing generation and hence a God-fearing nation. God bless you so much. Until next time, God bless you. And uh, we will finish with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you. As we establish the family altars, we pray that you help us. We know that we cannot do it by our own strength. But Lord, if you are in us and we are in you, we become more than conquerors. So we pray, our dear Father, that you help us build our altars at home, a time for worship, and a time, my Father, to project and to think, and Lord, even to meditate upon your doings upon our lives. We bless your name. We worship you. We even pray for our country, my Father. At this time when children are staying at home, help us to raise a God-fearing generation. Help us to raise children who will fear you and children who will, my Father, walk according to your ordinance. We bless your name and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Shalom. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Amen.